Welcome to Uru Preto. So back with another video here. It's not raining so far and I'm in front of this beautiful old church. Um, just found out that you can't enter unless you pay in cash. Now, I don't usually walk around with that much cash. So just keep in mind uh, when you do visit here, just walk around with like, you know, a hundred ray eyes or something. Uh, they don't take card or anything like that. So anyways, let's hope that the weather holds out. I'm gonna walk around show you as much as possible and it's because it's my only pretty much my only full day here so let's go and check out Uru Preto so can't go in there today it's fine maybe another day he's had a rough morning it looks like so the first thing you notice is a lot of views in this city so you're going to be doing also a lot of walking. <laughs> um, what I'll talk about first before just to get out of the way, a little bit about a little bit about this city. Um, it's approximately 300 years old, just over 300 years old. I'll put the dates specifically. I'm never good with uh, with dates to be honest. Um, yeah, so it was a it was a one of the oldest colony, colonial cities in, in Brazil, uh, next to Rio and a few other ones around the, around the country. Northeastern Brazil has a lot. And essentially, the name Uru Preto comes from the fact that it, is, uh, it was a mining town. And they used to get the gold from the Black Rocks. And another interesting piece of information is that the city used to be called Villa Rica or Richville. It's starting to fill up here with people, as you can see. I'm going to be going to walk through Praça Tiradentes, which I was at yesterday. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, it was a little crappier weather and whatnot. So let's go walk through there. So this is Rasa Tiradentes, and who he was was a one of the first revol revolutionaries who wanted to separate from Portugal, from the Kingdom of Portugal, and this was in the late 1700s. So what happened to him? was they the, the, the government basically squashed any any type of uh, revolutionary ideas and things like that so what happened to him he was hanged and a little bit of a <laughs> it's not that funny but it's gruesome right by this obelisk they stuck his they cut his head off and stuck it right there that was probably a very common practice in those days to basically thwart any other um, ideas of, you know, revolution or a revolution against the crown. So that was, that's pretty brutal. Um, the rumor is that he ran around the town looking for his head, but that's just like a, you know, a myth. So we're gonna walk around these rolling hills. Let's follow the crowd. <laughs> it's the only time I ever follow the crowd. And I didn't go down this way yet. I went, I came, I came from, from this way. Very, very uh, amazing architecture here. It's not a lot of time really to see everything if you come just for, just for like one or one or two days. You really have to spend, I would say, at, a minimum of three days, you know, to really get to see everything. I think this is uh, St. Francis of Assisi Church. I think this is the one you cannot film in. And next to it, you have a uh, arts and crafts market. I believe it's all made out of stone. We're going to take a look at that, but I want to go see if I can in fact go into this church and take a look it's one of the one of the bigger gems here in Uru Preto. another interesting fact 
I have not seen any other non-Brazilian tourists here. Apparently, uh, it's it's a really, really big place for a lot of Brazilians to come check out. Historically, obviously. Um, but I haven't heard any other languages around here. So it's very few and far between how many English speakers come here. It's a beautiful looking church, I'll tell you. Let's see if I can uh, film inside, but I doubt it. If I can't, I'll show you guys some pictures, if possible. Another guard dog off duty. <laughs> Oh, lá tudo bem? Vamos estar mais duas igrejas com esse ingresso. Ah, esse ingresso. A minha cis aqui uh -huh. e o santuário no Sal da Conceição. Ah, aqui, ó. Obrigado. Obrigado. Now this is a very beautiful church as well. That is crazy looking. Um, the story behind this is that there was a very famous architect, but I'll talk about that when we leave the church. I'll just show you around, but I will say one point that will, just so that in the moment of looking at this, you can kind of associate it. Um, he had, I think he was missing a hand or some fingers or something. He was like a, a handicapped person. And he basically did all of this with by strapping the tools, but I will talk more about that. So it gives you more of appreciation of the artwork here. It's amazing. So I was just sitting here and I have a, <laughs> a visitor. I honestly think that that was one of the most uh, beautiful churches I've ever seen. Even more beautiful than the ones in uh, in Portugal, in my opinion. So, I mean, if churches aren't your thing, this probably won't be a good place for you to visit. But, you know, I like history. Um, I generally like seeing beautiful churches like this one. But it's not for everybody. So let's go check out the fair. The little market selling all this stuff. Let's take a look at this fair. All made of stone. Very beautiful. Hola, tudo bem? Bom dia. Tudo, tudo feito de pedra? Tudo. Mas é pedra comum ou que tipo de pedra? É pedra sabão. Ah, sim. Ok. Bem bonito. Ah, é essa aqui. Isso. Aí depois que trabalha ela, né? Ela fica assim. E ela é lisinha, ó. Pode ver que ela. Pode ver que ela é bem linda. Antes, antes de fazer o, o arte, né? Isso. Ah, sim. Muito obrigado, viu? Não. So many beautiful things. <laughs> I don't have the room to take anything with me back home. I mean. Wow. Passport. That's unbelievable. Olá, tudo 
of the bay. Can I show this on my channel? I don't know. <laughs> Uma coisa bonita após a outra. <risos> Dominó. <risos> so if you come here, you're gonna have very, and you want to get something, you'll have a very difficult choice uh, choosing one or two items. Um, and you probably won't be able to take very much stuff with you because it's pretty heavy. This stuff, stone. It's all everything is literally made out of the stone that I just showed the lady that the lady showed us. So there's some things that are a little bit light, like this little cup, not that heavy. But generally speaking, most of the crafts here are, you know, pretty pretty heavy. But I think I think the worst the worst of it all is that you can't you just can't choose. There's so many things you, you'd have to like narrow it down. I mean they've got little statues here. You know, I mean, do you really want to buy a Christ statue if you've already been to Rio? Who knows? If it's your first time in Brazil, maybe. <laughs> The other thing that's really interesting is when they close up, I think it's open from 9 to 5, I believe. When they close up, they uh, they don't take everything home. So it's not like they let take, you know, how would you take all of this heavy stuff every day? Because this fair is pretty much every day. So what they do is they basically cover up everything and they leave it. That's how safe this city is, you know. There's no little punk ass thieves that are gonna that are gonna steal stuff. And this stuff's probably pretty expensive, you know, I would imagine. I don't imagine this stuff being cheap. You know? So the fact that it's artwork, rare artwork, I I really doubt that it's cheap. I don't even wanna ask. <laughs> Like this elephant, how much do you think this big rock would cost? They don't have... When there's no prices on things, you know that that's, that ain't gonna be cheap. <laughs> but overall... Let's ask how much one thing is. All out to the bank. How much is this game here? I don't think it's the price. Foi embora por isso. Vai lá. Só para curiosidade. Bom dia. Olá. Preço aqui. 150. 150. Só para saber porque não tem preços nem. Tem, moço, mas desmatinha, né? Desmachou. Obrigado, viu? So 150 reais for that, for that chest set. That's actually not that bad. Uh, what is that? It's probably like 30, 40 bucks US. I won't even have time to look at all of this stuff, to be honest. There's just so much. So this is how they do it. They have to chip away slowly. And then they paint it after. Muito concentração, né? Obrigado, viu? I didn't want to scare her and then she would <laughs> make a mistake. That would have been bad. I would have felt awful. Once you make one mistake on that, it's over. <laughs> Crazy. 
actually how they do it. That's what she was doing there to make the design. So where will we go now, you say? We will go down and I'm gonna check out the museum that they have. I think it's called Ale Jardin. I, I, mentioned, I mentioned this guy, so the architect of many of the things, and he's from this town. Um, he was a, uh, he had a, I don't know if it was a disease, but he, had, he definitely was missing fingers and things like that. He was a bit of a handicapped. So he was able to strap on tools on his, you know, limbs and whatnot, and did some of the artwork that I showed you in that church. Unbelievable. So he's definitely uh, a respected guy around this town. Uh, we go this way or do we go this way? I don't even know. So I checked my trusty map here and it's this way. Downhill now. <laughs> oh my God. Just make sure you're in shape if you, before you do this town because honestly, if you if you aren't, you definitely will get in shape from this from walking up and down and up and down. So let's go check out the museum, Ale Jardin. I think his name. I think his full name is Antonio Francisco Lisboa, but his uh, I guess he's got a nickname of uh, Ale Jardin. By the way, an interesting uh, tidbit, these signs are not allowed to be, like they can't take them out, screw in new ones or anything like that. They have to just do very minimal, uh, very minimal repairs because of the fact that it's a protected uh, historical site. And that brings me to my next, uh, next uh, fact, fun fact, is that this town was one of the very first UNESCO sites, world uh, UNESCO sites, um, because of the because of how much um, history there is, how many old buildings, a lot of different things. So it's definitely the first one. I don't remember what the other ones. There's a bunch around the world, but this one, um, it was the first one. Okay, so this is. This is Igreja de Alejadin, which is the architect that I told you about. Um, it looks closed, or this is not the entrance. Um, if it's closed, that's a shame, but that's okay. This whole area is beautiful. In the distance up there, there's a procession going on. I don't know if you guys can see that from here, but very cool. I mean, it's so far away. If I could get there, I would. I would film that. But <laughs> let's see. Let's see what happens. I'll check out the Ale Jardin Museum. It's apparently. <laughs> it's more. It's like 80% talking about alcohol. I researched a little bit about it. Um, I don't really drink, so I might try one little popular one, but we'll see. So this is the church. I'm gonna go in. And I think his, Ale Jardim's house is just up this street as well. Oh, another uh, interesting fact is that these churches, the reason why there's so many of them 
is because back in the day they were able to charge you know a, a tax more taxes the crown of portugal that is the more churches you had the more money that would basically go to the crown so that's why there's like there's got to be like 20 churches in this area and more in the, the neighboring towns i cannot find the entrance to the church i'll find it i couldn't find the entrance to that church but i'm gonna go to alejadin's house and this is actually uh rua alejadin so let's check it out i think it's a tour i don't know like a It's back this way, actually. Straight. I had to look on the map. I actually walked by it <laughs> when I was trying to get into this place, but. Where, where the heck it is? Casa Ale Jardim. Antonio Lisboa. Antonio Francisco Lisboa. There we go. See the gold? Found it better late than, than never. Que horas? 13 horas. Ah, 13 horas. Uma hora, então. Ah, ok. Daqui a pouco. Acho que é um. Em 10 minutos. Ah, tá bom. E dura quanto tempo? Uns 40 minutos. Ah, tá bom. Nós vamos. Então tá. Vocês querem guardar aqui dentro? Eu vou ficar assim. Ah, então tá. Um time. Olha aqui o cara. Só sentar aqui dentro, tá? Tudo bem? A gente... Permite fotos, tá? Menos vídeo. Let's just take a look over here. This is a very... Original. I think this is all original in here. Crazy. Preserved colonial house. So I won't be able to film the the little tour here, but I will talk about it as soon as I leave. Very cool. Okay, that was a really cool tour. It's worth checking out. Casa uh, de Alejadin. Olá, tudo bem? So this is where Alejadin is, I think, buried, or 
held. É aqui diferente do outro lugar que nós vamos ver lá no final. So yeah, his his uh, his body is in the this church as well as his father. Um, they didn't tell me where, but and they don't even have the name. It's just basically with a number. Muito obrigado. Viu? Tchau, tchau. The weather is just holding up. I'm happy. So let's head to the other side of this town. Ow. Oh, there's a bridge there. Sweet. Stone bridge, I think. <laughs> a lot of people just hanging out here. Wow. This is probably a really old bridge. I think everyone's taking a rest. <laughs> Characteristics. I think it's coming down. Let's walk through.
so look how high I am up in this town. That's crazy. And I still got a bit to go. <laughs> wow. This makes uh, Lisbon look like a uh, cakewalk. <laughs> if any of you ever been to Lisbon, you know that the walking is crazy there, but here, wow. Damn. Let's continue up. All right, we made it. Damn. Oh, if someone sells water here, thank God. Look at this from the very top. I mean, I'll see a better view up there, but crazy. Okay, I got some water, which is key. And now we're going up to the top and see if I can go in this church and show you guys the view. Okay. Wow. Besides the wires being in the way, it's pretty awesome. Maybe I'll go over where he is. Olha o que que vi ali, Now that's a view. For sure. Wow. Okay, what I'm gonna do now, take a bit of a break, go in this church, and then head wherever. Wherever, I think I wanna do the mine tour. I think I'll do that. That would be cool.
So let's check out this church. I don't know if I can film inside, but we'll figure it out. Foi cansativo. <risos> obrigado. Muito obrigado. Wow. Essa é uma outra beautiful one. E é bem lit, too, actually, like by these windows, which not a lot of churches have. Bom dia. Probably a lot of gold too. Wow. So it's ten reais. Cash or Pix. If you have Pix, which is a transferring app. Wonderful looking. I guess it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> Let's take a look at the view over here. So what I'm going to do next when this stops, <laughs> is head down. There we go. Uh, head down now, and when I get to the bottom, I'll start uh, recording again, because uh, it's uh, gonna be a hell of a, hell of a incline, that's for sure. Let's go. So we're gonna check out this church which has the, it has the most gold than any of them. I think we can film in there, we'll ask. Take a look. Wow, it's quite beautiful. Olá, bom dia, tudo bem? Tudo bom? Aproveitar, tem que ser descobrir o ingresso ali, por favor. Ok, amigo. Deseja tirar foto, flash, por favor, e não pode tocar nas peças, viu? Tá, tá bom. Obrigado. Uhum. Ok, so, if I had to say... Just to come visit one church in this whole place, even though they're all quite nice, I would come to this one.
this is there's a lot of angels in this church and and it was done in the baroque style as well i i'm not that great at historical art Quite a beautiful church. One of many here in Ouro Preto. Okay, I think we should... We should go do the mine tour. So you basically go into a mine uh, that they used to go into uh, many, many years ago. So I'm gonna head to do that. I don't know how much it is, I don't know where it is exactly, but it's something to do here. I'm a little claustrophobic, so that might not be, might not work out for me. Let me just get a shot of the church here. That's the one uh, we went into before I made this massive climb. And it looks like the weather is just holding up. So that's good news. Very good news. So let's head to the mines. I don't know where it is, but we'll find it. Ah, você daqui. Nasceu aqui? Ah, sim. Aí você pegou o asfalto, eu chego daqui minha irmã, só no prédio. Caramba. Só que eu vi passar por dentro da cidade, assim, pra igreja. Aí só no. Logo eu cheguei nessa subida, eu falei, não, tem muito tempo que eu subo essa subida. Aí eu gosto de subir rápido, né? É. Que é, a gente acostumar e eu gosto de correr. Tem que ter pernas boas. Só que no final lá eu cansei, eu não cansava não. Foi com 15 anos de boa. Eu não posso sair eu daqui sem mais conhecer. Hã? Eu subi aqui mais 10 vezes hoje. Ah, sério? É. Sou GT. Mina da Bijoca. Ok. É recepção, aí você pode levar com a luz aí. Tá. Bom passeio, viu? Obrigado. Olá. Cansado, mas tô bem. Passei e tenho o valor de 60 reais. So it's 60 reais to get in do the cave tour. Eu vou falar inglês no meu vídeo. Essa é uma toquinha higiênica só porque os capacetes são de uso comum. Bom, capacetes são de uso comum. O que você acha, guys? Ah, sim. Ah, para não passar nada para alguém. Isso. Okay. Vem aqui o capacete. Guarda óculos. Uh -huh. E o telefone. Uh -huh. Ah. Uh -huh. I look like I'm ready to work in the, in the mines. Uh -huh. Ah, sim. Podemos? Podemos. It's lit up the whole way, so I should be okay. Quem trabalhava aqui dentro eram somente homens. Homens esses que vinham de uma região conhecida como Costa da Mina. Esses homens eles eram sequestrados, traficados e vendidos como mercadoria. Mercadoria denominada de Negro Mina e que tinha um valor de um quilo de ouro. Uhum. Cuidado com a cabeça. Esse pode subir, dar uma olhadinha. Pode subir mais um pouquinho, tá. você dá uma olhadinha ali em cima. Ah, sim. Vou mostrar. Take a look, guys. Então, pessoas entraram aqui para trabalhar. Caramba. So, people will go up all day long, as you guys saw the presentation. Terrible conditions. Sem ar para respirar também, né? Ar fresco. 
você vai observar esses buraquinhos aqui, que são chamados buracos de iluminação, que serviam justamente para colocar uma espécie de lamparinazinha, denominada de candeeiro. Esse candeeiro tinha como combustível óleo de baleia ou óleo de candeia. Porém, a queima de ambos gerava um gás tóxico inodoro para os seres humanos. Então, para evitar que as pessoas morressem por conta desse gás, eles traziam para dentro da mina um passarinho. E esse passarinho vai servir como um medidor de ar natural. Ou seja, se ele começasse a apresentar sinais de intoxicação, como por exemplo, abrir e fechar o bico, era sinal que esse ar não estava mais respirável. Portanto, essas pessoas tinham que sair da mina. E a forma que eles tinham de avisar era fazendo uso da expressão óleo passarinho, que hoje a gente utiliza para tirar foto. Então, eles falavam essa frase, todos saíam e a própria mina elimina o gás graças ao sistema de ventilação. Interessante. Okay? Alguma pergunta? Coitado dos passarinhos. <risos> pois é, coitado dos passarinhos, gente. É muito passarinho. É. Bom, podemos seguir? Podemos. Cuidado com a cabeça. já é um pouco mais escuro, que já é um cinza azulado. Mm. You guys can see that? Different types of uh, minerals. Argilha, né? Argilha. Argilha? Esse é não? Argila? Argila. É isso? <risos> Ele é um mineralzinho chamado filito. Ah, sim. E aí a gente tem esse terceiro tom, que é o amarelo ocre. Three tone shades. Interesting. Esse amarelo ocre é o mesmo tom que a gente encontra, por exemplo, nas fachadas das igrejas. Bom, e né, como a gente está literalmente dentro da serra, um dos seus outros componentes é o minério de ferro, conhecido aqui como itabirito, que significa pedra que brilha. O itabirito ele vai ser tem um papelzinho no início da descoberta desse ouro, que é quando eles encontram um ouro no leito dos rios, conhecido como ouro de aluvião, e que tinha uma camada espessa e escura em seu entorno. Camada essa que era feita justamente desse minério de ferro. Então, muito criativos, eles decidem dar o nome da cidade, né, o nome do ouro ali, de ouro preto, que é o que dá nome à cidade hoje. Como a gente está literalmente dentro da serra, e ele é um dos seus componentes, a gente encontra ele também nas paredes, brincando com um simples imã. Então você pode tentar fixá-lo em algum ponto da parede. Né? Esse é um imã muito ah, comum. É. Interessante. Uhum. Caramba. Fica mesmo? <risos> Fica mesmo. <risos> Caramba. Então, por exemplo, tanto do lado de cá quanto aqui, ó. Ele se fixa. Uau. E é difícil até de tirar, né? Porque a gente agora vai conhecer o outro andar da mina. Cuidado com a cabeça. Tá. Sem o ar condicionado aqui fica bem abafado. Uhum. É? Na verdade a gente não tem o ar condicionado. Esse ar que a gente está sentindo é natural. Ah, ok. Só que ele se resfria em contato com a rocha. Então é. por isso que a gente se sente esse ar um pouco ah, mais friozinho. Ah, então não tem. Bom, a mina, ela tem um formato um pouquinho diferente essa aqui da outra. Ela tem um formato um pouco mais quadrado né, e tudo mais. Então ela é alta. 
estreita, está fazendo diversas curvas e tem um teto em formato de degrau. Tudo isso são diferenças na estrutura que permitem que os dois andares se mantenham de pé. Caramba. Até o outro? Até o outro. Então, tipo, pode ser. Ele handle isso. Tá bom. Vai. E agora, né? Para encerrar o seu passeio, você agora vai fazer uma experiência, uma pequena experiência. Como essas minas elas foram redescobertas, era muito comum que crianças ou até mesmo adultos as explorassem para brincar ou coisa parecida. E geralmente né, as minas não têm iluminação, então eles vão usar velas ou lanternas. O que você vai fazer? Você vai sair sim da mina, porém sem a minha iluminação. Você pode usar a sua, do seu telefone, uma coisa parecida. Ah, Só para você entender como que é transitar <risos> nesse espaço, ok? Preparado? Agora sim. So we're gonna see how it looks like with all the lights off and I'm gonna use my uh, light here. Preparado? Então, eu vejo você agora só lá fora. Uau. E é para sair? Isso, tá. é para sair. So that's we're gonna go out. We're replicating how it would be back in the day with no light. As you can see, no light. <laughs> Now we have light at the end of the tunnel. Meu amigo, encerro aqui meu passeio com você. Espero que você tenha gostado. Gostei. A gente agora vai voltar lá para a recepção para que vocês possam, você possa se desequipar e lavar suas mãos. Tá, tá bom. Tá bom. So, tour is over. Going to wash my hands. Very cool. Don't recommend it for claustrophobic people. All right. So, nearing the end of my trip here, I'm not going to do too many more places. I think I'm pretty much churched out. Um, but I'll finalize the video maybe at a restaurant or something. I don't know. Let's see. All right, so I'm back at uh, Praça Tiradentes and I'm gonna go basically end this video eating stuff <laughs> because I'm exhausted. You guys will have to come and check out the rest for yourself. Uh, there's a lot of things, other things to do. Um, it's very tiring. So there's a place I know over here on this street. It's by the, by the Kilo. It's on this street, I know for sure. <laughs> What a tiring day, guys, honest. But it was a lot of fun. recommend checking out Uru Preto but I would do like a three-day thing if you want to see everything three days if you want to do what I did and just run around like like a crazy man in one day then you could do it in two days because the weather did not work in my favor yesterday but that's okay I always anticipate that so I'm gonna keep going down this street okay I can see it it's Vovó Chica Vovó Chica Hamburgeria. There we go. I knew, I, I knew it was in the right place. And by the way, this street is only a one-way street, so the cars are only going to come from this way. There we go. Oh, it's not open. Olá. Não está aberto ainda, né? Não. Vai abrir. 18 horas. Okay. Obrigado. Okay, so it's only opening at 6 p.m. So, now I gotta find a different place. As soon as I find that place, I'll, it'll show you.
Well, wasn't able to show the uh, restaurant because there was way too much, uh, what do you call it, popular music playing, so it would have been screwy for my channel. And I think I'm gonna end the video here in Uru Preto. I don't know if you guys can see me that well, it's not very well lit here. Some dog wars going on here. I think he's not happy with the other dogs by him. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this trip to Oro Preto because it was a very long day. Very, very long day. So I'm gonna head towards my place and tomorrow I'll be leaving and going to my next destination. But actually, I'll be going to Belarusan first. And then I'll be heading to a completely different location, which a lot of people have not been to and probably have never heard of. So, this is Nick signing off from Uro Preto. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.